Good morning. Our Sunday school lesson for today comes from uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 31 through 39. Now, uh, Paul's letter to the Romans was, was written as, as Paul was planning a, a missionary journey to Spain, and he expected to stop in Rome briefly to, to meet members of the Christian church there. Uh, perhaps the founders of the church had, had been at Pentecost and had carried their message back to Rome. We really don't know uh, the history of, of the church's inception. We just know that there was a growing number of Christians in Rome. Probably the church had been started by converted Jews, but Emperor Claudius had expelled the Jews from Rome during his reign, possibly because of their refusal to acknowledge his divinity or possibly because of, of some of their infighting with, with the new Christian converts. But some also believe that he, that he thought that some of the businessmen were not proportioning him enough in taxes. Whatever the reason, uh, Claudius expelled them and, and then after he died, the Jews began to, uh, to return to Rome. Paul's letter was sent after Claudius' death and when Jews were returning. And this return of Christian Jews resulted in a bit more conflict with the Christian community because the Gentile believers were very much now in the majority. Paul was attempting to help mitigate some of the theological and social problems between the two groups. He also knew that they were being subjected to increasing dangers from authorities of the Roman government who were beginning to clamor for their extinction. Let me begin uh, uh, with Romans 8, 31 through 39, but I, I want to go back and pick up the beginning of, of verse 29 first. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And now beginning with 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised up to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If God is with us, who is against us? This rhetorical question was, was offered to put the minds of these troubled Christians at ease. God is our protector through thick and thin. Suffering is not proof that, that God has abandoned us it's to be expected in an imperfect world. If we merely look at our circumstances and situations as a measure of God's love, we will struggle to find assurance. Our thoughts need to be directed to the work he has done in and through 
the work and ministry of Jesus. Paul specifically addresses trials, dangers, and distress, but he then emphasizes the things that cannot separate us from God. You, you may have heard the story of Frederick Nolan. He was fleeing from his enemies during a time of Christian persecution in North Africa. The men pursued him over hills, through valleys, and across rivers. Finally, desperate for rest, he saw a cave and a rock outcrop above him. Too tired to go further, he crawled to the back of the cave, expecting to meet his fate there as his pursuers were sure to come and kill him. As he was hiding, he saw a small spider atop the mouth of the cave, and the spider began to weave a web. The web soon covered the cave entrance. And almost at that same time, he heard the men approaching. He could hear them as they stood outside talking to themselves. They saw the web and concluded that Nolan could not have entered the cave without disturbing it. So they continued their search beyond his hiding place. Nolan lived to share his story with the world. He always began by thanking God. And then he said, where God is, a spider's web is like a wall. And where God is not, a wall is like a spider's web. That's the truth of Romans 8.31. If God is for us, who can be against us? God is our protector. We are also told that God is our provider. In Genesis 22.12 is the story of Abraham who was prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac when God said, you have not withheld your son, your only son. Then God allowed him to substitute a sacrifice because of his devotion. You know, I think most of us would do almost anything to protect our children. Paul insists that the ultimate proof of God's love for us was the sacrifice of his only son in order to allow us to escape our sins and our failures and our responsibilities to him. Paul insists that God provides for our physical and material needs, but will not cater to our greed. Paul had come to the understanding that material things are inconsequential if they stand in the way of being more Christ-like in our actions. God is also our defender because our transgressions have already been absolved. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Even when things seem darkest, that love is present. Uh, when I was growing up, a, a neighbor and a good friend of my parents uh, lived just up the road from us. He had served in the army during World War II. He had been captured by the Japanese, had spent over a year on a concentration camp. My mom said that he had looked like a skeleton when he returned home to the wife that he had married a short time before he was deployed. He didn't talk about his war experience for years, and he suffered from what doctors today would describe as PTSD. At the Veterans Hospital, he eventually began to share some of his experiences with other men undergoing similar problems. But it was not until the mid to late 60s that he found that he could talk to his family and his friends about the war. He began to volunteer to talk with the soldiers who were returning home from the battlefields in Vietnam. He said one day he didn't know how much he was helping them, but he said the effort really helped to calm his personal demons. He knew that these men were having trouble trying to forget a past that they continued to relive every day. Their bodies refused to allow them to move on and they had to carry scars and attempt to adjust to them. Think about the scars that Paul carried. He had been a leader in persecuting Christians. Only a life-changing encounter with Jesus had enabled him to turn his life around. Instead of withdrawing into himself and 
reliving the horrors of his past, he allowed Jesus to take him by the hand and lead him toward a life of service. He was beaten, ostracized by former friends, and imprisoned. But he remained faithful through all the adversities because nothing could separate him from God's love. Life, death, angels or rulers, present or past, forces of darkness, distance and separation, or anything that has ever been created. He was at peace with God. You know, recent events may make it seem that our world is falling apart around us. Friends and relatives have died. Hate and discord rocks our nation and even our own community. We may long to go back to our past when life seemed happier, but that's not an option. We need to experience the inner peace that's at the heart of this letter to the Romans. We need to look forward and move forward, finding opportunities of service by sharing God's love and helping others experience the joy that we can feel, even during hard times. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for your steadfast love for us. Please increase our faith and allow us to feel your presence as we find opportunities to serve you. Amen.